thanks for staying out late. It, uh, my name is Lydia Nolan-Schmidt. I am the Chicago Chief Rep for PAL, which is the Parent Artist Advocacy League. Um, and I am here to host this lovely panel called How Your Theater Can Become More Equitable, a More Equitable Employer of Parents and Caregivers, which is kind of a mouthful. Um, and we have this lovely panel of artists. Up. Should, I'm gonna go maybe down the row and introduce you each. Um, this is, say your name for me. Because I, I asked you for your first name and I didn't ask you for your last name. Oh yeah, because my last name is super fun. Um, <laughs> uh, Natalie Goldie. Um, Natalie Goldie. Sometimes it's Glade because out of breath. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it sure is. Um, so <laughs> Natalie is an actor, writer, producer, and newly appointed director of operations at Teatro Vista, and most recently mother of a four and a half month old delight, oh who is a husband's problem. Good job getting out of the house and staying late. <laughs> um, next we have Gabby Randall Bent, who is director, dramaturg, mother, and PhD candidate. And that's making me tired just listing all of those things. And most recently, the newly appointed associate artistic director of the Court Theater. Hello. Yeah. Um, next we have Kate Wellum, who oversees all foundation, government, and corporate giving at the Goodman Theater, as well as operations in the development department, while also raising two children aged one and five, so fantastic. Um, Elsa Feldner is co-founder of On Our Team and the creator of Pay Equity Standards, a certification system that recognizes arts organizations that center fair and equitable pay. Thank you for that. She's also the uh, Associate Director of Programs at Lawyers for the Creative Arts, Illinois' only pro bono legal services organization for the arts, which is amazing. And uh, John, who's our lovely director, who you already saw, um, is the director uh, of the cleanup, obviously. And she's also the accessibility coordinator for Broken Nose Theater. So like world colliding, I feel like, with accessibility and talking about parenting. Um, I should also mention, I, I'm also a parent. Uh, if that's not obvious, I didn't mention my own children. They are hopefully asleep. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's a problem. Um, they are 11 and 7 and 7, because like in, um, I've already forgotten the character's name right. in the play. Like Julie, Julie in the play. Somebody has twins in the Julie, play. Yeah. Julie yeah. has um, twins in the play, and I was like, that's a lot. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, I'm going to just go down the line and just quickly tell us, like, when did theater and parenting first intersect for you? Some of us, maybe it was longer ago, some of us very, very recently. So what, is, what does that look like for you? Go. Oh, I, I chose the wrong seat. I should not be going first. <laughs> I'll, I won't pick you first ever. See, I'm a teacher, so I'll make sure that I divide it up equally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, um, well, last year, I guess, uh, 2021, October, I found out I was pregnant. I was working on a TV set at the time, doing COVID safety. Um, and I was immediately falling asleep at like three in the afternoon. Mm, like yeah. I couldn't, couldn't cope with it. Our schedules were 15 hour days. Um, and I was in a long distance marriage and I was like, it was, you know, it was starting winter. So I was like, I, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. And so I had like a combination of like a negative, positive experience, like simultaneously. Um, I was in a sketch group that I was pining to come back to after I finished with the TV show that I ended up quitting early, like two weeks early because I just couldn't do it anymore. And then um, without any job prospects, I was just like, I quit. <laughs> because I, I needed to quit, and there was nothing there for me. Um, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna come back to my sketch group and I'll just write until I can't write anymore, you know? I'll always, like get that creative outlet done, um, and then I'll go be a mom. <laughs> 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 and the kind of like initial response from the group was like, oh, Congratulations. Um, I mean, are you going to be able to do that while you're pregnant? And, you know, immediately I'm offended. I'm like, what? I'm not dying. <laughs> I'm having a baby. I'll be fine. I can still use my hands to type. And my feet still work. I'm good. Um, it just, it was like immediately this kind of like static. And then I ended up getting pushed out of the group in January. So like, I, I, I got to do like, two shows with them and then, I don't know, like the vibe was just off, so I got kicked off that. 
I got kicked off of the lead part in the film, um, which was like borderline a mutual decision, but also they still haven't filmed yet. Mm. So it's like, okay, but now it's not on my part anymore. It's like, whatever, it's fine. Um, and then at the same time, Wendy Mateo um, and Lorraine Diaz from Teatro Vista um, just like took me in. I was like in the middle of filming um, Guitar Thief, uh, which is like the last project I did, uh, and I got pregnant during that project. This is a very long answer. Okay. Um, anyway, I was like crying in her car, basically. <laughs> like she was driving us from location to location and just letting her know what my situation was. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, I'm pregnant. I don't really know anybody in this town uh, in terms of family. And she, like after that, like her and Lorena reached out to me. And we're like, hey, um, do you like, like to do theater stuff, <laughs> you know? And do you like to do admin stuff? Is that something you feel comfortable doing? And I was like, yeah, I can do that. And they just like, took me in like a wounded bird. Like it was phenomenal. Like they've really taken care of me. And it's so yeah, simultaneous negative positive experience um, coupled with a uh, long distance husband who is back. So it's great. Oh. <laughs> I love the story with healthy and happy. Yeah, I am. Yeah. It was nice. The baby was born. <laughs> and that's all we want. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go. Okay, I'm ready. Um, so I have a uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Um, so he's uh, two in like three months, um, which matters because I also have a ten month old, um, oh, wow. and I don't want you. To, I, I don't want you. To <laughs> I want y'all to have to do the math. <laughs> um, and so uh, my son was born um, August 2020, which means that um, I, I uh, found out I was pregnant. Um, we, um, my husband is from the UK. We went in for Christmas to, and told his family, and then we went to Paris, um, and then we came back and we had all of these plans, um, mm -hmm. and then we uh, didn't do any of Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, uh, I think that that more than anything has colored my experience. Mm -hmm. Um, it, 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 in, in that I actually got to do more than I ever could have done, mm -hmm. um, because everything happened in my living room for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we were present and really sort of together as a family, two together, so then there were four of us, uh, uh, so <laughs> three, um, for, for a year and a half. And so mm -hmm. I think um, now, I am just now um, figuring out what it means to be doing the work and to be parenting at the same time. Um, uh, before, everything was just sort of a jumble. Um, and I think the, the thing that has been such a gift for me is that we, um, I have this new position. I have, um, um, I'm, have, we have a new, a very old house. We're talking about it, but it's new to us. Um, uh, we like all, we had all these big life changes happen at the same time that the whole world changed. Um, and so, uh, nothing is normal, which means that everything is on the table. And so, um, my first time back in the rehearsal room, um, after my daughter, I was just like, well, here are the options, like, uh, five day weeks, daytime tech. <laughs> and my production manager was like, cool. <laughs> um, and the, the, my first show back after my son, um, I was like, I'm going to have to do this whole thing on a yoga ball. And they're like, great. Should we dress it in black? And I was like, yes. And her name is Beatrice. Um, and, and, and so the, so, um, I feel like I have, I get to live in this, um, place of opportunity and of calling shots 
that um, I am very grateful for because I know it's very different um, than um, what came before and what happened before. Um, but also it's scary because I don't know what's right, you know? Like I don't know what's possible. Um, and so uh, we spend a lot of time winging it, um, which is also good, yeah. I just, all these pandemic babies, I, I love. <laughs> That's gotta be so hard, I can't even imagine. Like, having a kid August 2020, I was like, well, at least it's not March. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I was like, we're lucky. Um, but then it hit me one day when I picked him up from daycare and I just looked at his classroom and I was like, y'all are the babies. Like, mm -hmm. this is like, you're the, like this whole class is the moment. And they all have their little masks on. Mm -hmm. Like they were, like they, like they're, they're two now. Yeah. And so they have to wear masks. Um, it's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Oh my gosh. Kate, how are you? Um, yeah. So my my eldest just turned five, like last week. Um, so I'm still getting my mouth around that. But uh, I had an awesome experience. I, as part of my fundraising life have relationships with a lot of lead funders around town, and I was so incredibly lucky um, to be coming through as a cohort at the Goodman, sort of just behind the women who had the first babies. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were there to be my supervisors and my mentors and to hold the door, and, and not that everything was done, but that like the ground had been softened a little bit. Um, and I have a very clear memory of going to visit um, Elizabeth Garrity at the Cheney Foundation, who is delightful um, and is sort of retiring, um, and I am sorry if, to anyone who didn't get to know her, um, but I was five or six months pregnant and doing the thing you start to have to do where you go, so I'm pregnant, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm not going to be around for like three week, three months for a while here, and then I'll be back, and, and I sort of did that whole spiel, and I said, but then that'll be handled and things will go back to normal. And she, <laughs> she, uh, she's a mom. She looked at me and she went, no. <laughs> That's great, I'm so happy for you, but no. <laughs> um, and it was this, I don't know why it was a surprise to me, but it was this moment of like, right, right, two decades, that's the commitment here. <laughs> um, and I think I did a lot of recalibrating and, and my boss, who's got, just sent a kid to college, um, you know, talks about she sort of had women she leaned on and, and has adages like, childcare is a problem that is never solved you will always be resolving it. So just accept that. Um, which I find really helpful, actually. Um, so I'm, I am so lucky and so blessed to have those mentors and those role models and those people who came right ahead of me. Um, because anything I've achieved has been on the heels of something they did first. That's amazing. But I don't, I don't understand, I mean, my oldest is about to turn 12 and I still don't understand how anybody ever figures out childcare. It yeah. is the most impossible puzzle. What do you do no. with them? I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, that, it's we'll kept them alive for almost 12 years, so I guess we'll it's be, yeah. Yeah. No, it's a puzzle. Yeah, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Elsa? Um, so when you read uh, the introductions, right, I did not include my children in my introductions. Okay. And that um, is kind of like my metaphor for um, parenting. Mm -hmm. I definitely heard stories and had friends whose careers ended when they had children, and so I hid my pregnancy until about seven months and then kind of uh, only worked with people who would like um, accept and welcome a costume designer. That was my background. Um, and then, you know, uh, two weeks after my 10 year old was born, uh, born at 10, no. Um, <laughs> two weeks after he was born, I started my first tech. Um, and, um, you know, it was a, um, definitely a choice that I wanted to do as like a tenacious person who cares about my artistic practice and um, you know wanting to be my own person um, and that's how I my life like really didn't change having kids I took him everywhere with me um, and then I also have a four-year-old um, I took her everywhere with me um, mostly worked in the admin by that point um, but yeah I mean uh, definitely uh, worked with companies that were good with parents, welcomed children in tech and rehearsals and all of that, um, but had friends that you know did not have those experiences with the companies they worked with. 
Yeah, and when we met, we worked together, and I think those tweens were like two and three? Yeah. Is that right? A collaboration? Oh. Or um, it was on Sketchbook. I don't know when it was. Well, I mean, mm. collaboration is a great example, right? Yeah. Like kids everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had a kid in tech. I had an actor him. like babysitting his nephew, and he's like, "Can I bring him tech?" I was like, "Yeah, my kid's not gonna be there, so I need to hold some kid." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. What about you, John? Uh, so uh, I don't. I don't have a second, but I have a <laughs> two-year-old. I have. I have um, two and two and nine months. Actually. So he was January 2020. So he was eight weeks old, and then the world shut down. Um, so yeah, we also had all sorts of plans. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he. I mean, I took him to a strike at like six weeks old. Like, <laughs> you know, I was still um, he sings. Yeah, yeah, that was fine. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was more to like, look, here he is. He exists. Okay, now, Daddy, come take him. <laughs> it was more like introducing him to the company. But I mean, they're just, um, for me, because the pandemic and motherhood coincided so closely, uh, this is my first full production back mm -hmm. working on something. Um, yeah, I, would, I just wasn't sure if I wanted to try and navigate those waters. Mm -hmm. um, but this show, was very close to my lived experience <laughs> and uh, resonated very deeply and I just really wanted to be able to be involved with telling the story. So I took a chance on trying to figure it out, um, figure out childcare and figure out everything else. And it's been bumpy, but it's been better with support than it would have been without because I think if I'd done it with a different company or different circumstances, it would not have been as good. So, I mean, speaking of that, that sort of goes to my next question anyway, which is what specific things have theaters done to make your work possible easier? So what were some of the specific things on this show, Jen, that, ha that happened with, with props? Yeah, I mean, well, for one, they, they offered um, a childcare stipend in addition to a stipend. That's amazing. Yeah, which is huge. I mean... Yeah. My husband uh, is his. We don't have the kind of relationship where he has a nine to five and so he can watch the kid for evening or like that's not. He's a clinical psychologist, so I uh, there was a lot of childcare to cover um, for us, um, and so yeah, that made it that made it possible. It, it really, I don't think it would have been possible without that. That's amazing, mm -hmm. and that was that was an, an offer, mm -hmm. all right, right? Mm -hmm. That was that was. I mean, back in the day, that was unheard of. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, love, I love that it's even a thing. That it's now. a show about kids, about yeah. parenting. Well, not about the kids. It was about, yeah, early childhood caregiving. And so... And I know there's at least one parent in the cast. Mm-hmm. Two, two parents. Two parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both, Both parents. Lucy and Lynette are parents. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's outstanding. And we have, you know, parents on the team. I mean, our playwright, Allie, is a parent. Obviously. <laughs> costume designer as well as parent. And, oh, wow. Yeah. So we do. Parents on the team. <laughs> What about anyone else? What's what's something that a, a theater company or any related employer has done to sort of make your work possible? Can I, can I jump in? Yeah, jump in. So the whole like conversation about it's hard to like figure out childcare. Like part mm -hmm. of that is the financial piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you know I have to talk about pay equity. Yeah. But like the like the floor of supporting parents is paying them a fair and equitable thriving wage. Um, you know, we talk about like a living wage, right? Well, that's a keep on working wage because you can't save your kid's college fund or retirement or these sorts of things. And um, I don't know if people know what theater workers make, but <laughs> often it is sub-minimum wages, um, you know, 1099 contracts and all that comes with that. And so, um, you know, like, all the extra things that companies can do on top of that are great, but if they're not paying a fair and equitable wage that you know is in line with life, um, you know it's it's kind of like the fluff that covers up what's like actually happening below. Yeah, hundred percent. Anyone else? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, during my. Um, 
my maternity, just when things were starting to get kind of shaky, uh, my husband was still unemployed because his, his contract had ended. There's a lot of context there. His contract had ended in St. Louis, but he didn't have a new job yet. So I was on Moms and Babies, which uh, absolute lifesaver for anyone watching in Illinois. They will pay for everything. Um, everything. Uh, I, I looked at the bill. It was like $12,500, and I didn't pay fucking rent. So Moms and Babies. Um, so I got on insurance real easy, but then um, uh, Dead Revista, uh, Lola and Wendy, they were like, so for maternity leave, we can't, because um, I was part-time at that time, we can't offer you actual maternity leave. But what we can do is, sorry, keep going, just keep going. We can, we can still pay you like half of what you were normally working. Uh, for every paycheck until you come back. <coughs> um, and I was like, that's that's great. And I didn't ask for that. I, yeah. I didn't, I never put that on my plate or or was like, God, I'm joined in for something. Like, I, I, they just saw that I had a need and they took care of it. Mm. And that made it easier to come back. Yeah. And I mean, that sort of chimes with you like finding a home where people are supportive of parents and understand what the needs are yeah. and then choosing to give them your talent and work and yeah. self our entire staff is parents it's amazing they, they, and like we're all moms we yeah. all get it and it's yeah. amazing i love that yeah i don't know you don't have to <laughs> i mean i think that um um, to Natalie's point, the I like hesitate to call it community because that also like is insidious in ways mm -hmm. that um, that sort of takes advantage of the um, like they talked about in the show the sort of expectation of maternal labor. <laughs> mm -hmm. But like I I do think that um, having near peer models mm -hmm. like really. Um, uh, 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 s sort of like mothering shamelessly I think is one of the only reasons that I'm where I am right like um, um, the uh, Jen Goddard who's a production manager at court my first show there she was pregnant and I wasn't even thinking about anything but like you know it was it was in my head in a way that now this many years later, uh, five or six years later, like my son wears most of her mm -hmm. kids' clothes, right? Mm -hmm. And like, and so like that, um, and then those clothes get passed on to, uh, to um, uh, my um, one of my good friends who I just co-directed a show with. Um, I was pregnant during my last tech, <laughs> and then she was pregnant during our tech, right? Um, and so. Um, and so like when somebody says, are you okay? Do you need to take a break? Do, mm -hmm. do what you need. Kids are welcome. It's mm -hmm. not, um, it's, it matters who says that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think like, um, hiring and paying and empowering parents and in my experience, mothers especially, not just so that you get their sort of maternal instincts and in labor, but that also like they have the voice to say, mm. I see where you are, I see what's going on. Like you don't have you don't have to explain anything. Mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. Um, I think makes a lot of things that feel impossible much more possible. Yeah. Mothering what is it? Mothering shamelessly. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna steal that phrase. That makes my heart just like sing, because this is what, I don't know, my kids are older, so this is what I was hoping for when mine were little, and I would bring, you know, just say like, no, this is what it is. Here's a baby, we have to take a break mm -hmm. at this time. I can't come to this, you know, like just putting it out there and being visible, yeah. and that that hopefully creates more space. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna move forward. 
in, our, in your current role or roles, uh, what structure, structures do you see in place to support parent artists? I'll start mm -hmm. and I'll own that the Goodman has a pile of resources yep. and that I acknowledge that and that a lot of what we're able to do is because of that. Um, I, and, and the Goodman is, so, just to give you a sense, we have about 180 employees and we contract with about 500 artists a year. So when we talk about to support parents, we're talking about a lot of different working environments. Um, so I actually, for this panel, bugged a couple people around the theater who work in areas that I don't work in about mm. like, hey, I sort of know, but can I fact check what I think I know? Mm. Um, so, and, and there is formal policy and there is culture, right? Mm -hmm. So we have eliminated 10 out of 12s. Mm. Right. We, have, we are union everywhere, so pay is set, and we actually can't offer some of those extra perks because of the way the, the contracts are set, mm. but we can change working conditions. So we've eliminated 10 out of 12s. We're working towards a five-day rehearsal week mm. for every show, mm -hmm. regardless of who's on it. Um, we are much more flexible than we used to be about contracted artist conflicts. We have an actor in Christmas Carol right now whose kids are gonna come stay at the theater um, because that's what that actor needs. Mm -hmm. Um, on the admin side, uh, it's been incremental <coughs> progress, but currently you can get 12 weeks of paid parental leave, 100% mm -hmm. wow. paid leave, insurance covered, wow. the whole deal, um, which is pretty exciting. Um, and you can also do things, you can accrue up to six weeks of sick and care leave, essentially, um, and we have short-term disability leave. Um, so when you start talking about partly the leave and the baby having and that stuff, but also <laughs> the, the physicals and the dentist appointments and the, the my kid has the sniffles and I can't send them to the preschool <laughs> and give me half an hour to figure out what the situation is. Um, all that stuff helps. Um, but I think it, I would also say, and I, I, I was talking to our um, artistic producer, Malkia Stampley, about this, and she was saying, uh, and, and I think it's a great point, so I'm, I am amplifying here, that it matters who's on the other side of the table. She's a parent. Mm -hmm. um, and that that generally, no one wants to bring their kid to work, right? <laughs> <laughs> no one woke up this morning and was like, I'd rather do it on a baby than do the job I'm passionate about, and I would rather do my job with a kid bugging me the whole time. Like, that's no one's plan. Um, so if someone is coming to say, can I leave early, can I come in late, can I bring my kid to rehearsal, can I bring my kid to tech, whatever it is, you're their last resort. Um, and having people in positions of authority who get that helps tremendously. Um, I, my awesome boss talks all the time, super transparently about, I gotta leave at 4.30 today, I got soccer pickup. I'll see on email, like that's the deal. And it makes it so much easier to say, hey, I'm gonna be in at 10 instead of nine because I have to go to the pediatrician this morning or whatever the deal is. She's like, cool, see you then. Um, we're also uh, a hybrid workplace now. So everybody on salary, on staff, um, is only expected to be in three out of five days a week. Um, mm -hmm. And there are parents who have more complicated situations who are basically work from home as much as they want. Um, so there's a lot of pieces um, and we're still thinking about how could we do it better, but that's where we're at. Can I jump in? Just yeah. because I hear a lot of like support for parents who are on staff. Yeah. And then, you know, you think of like the artists who are creating the work, mm -hmm. and mostly, not entirely, but they're freelance, contract work, no safety net, you know? Um, and it just, you know, maternity leave's awesome, sure. being able to leave early is great, but like that's not given to most working theater yeah. artists. Yeah, I mean, I think what our hope was with this panel is having like a variety of like mm -hmm. from prop to the Goodman. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's up here. <laughs> uh, you know, what are what are the structures that are in place, and 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 what can what more can we do? I mean, and the thing is, like, the more places like the Goodman, places like the court are putting these policies and structures and cultures in place, like that's gonna, <clears throat> I think in a way it kind of trickled up, mm -hmm. right? Because I think it did start with, it feels to me anyway, like it started with artists and it started with with people really advocating. And maybe that's me with, with my advocacy hat on, <laughs> thinking that we did more than we did. But um, 
but I think it's also going to show like, oh, this is the expectation. The court's not doing 10 out of 12, so the, why am I gonna do a 10 out of 12 here? Mm -hmm. Like, so, you know, I think it's all, it's a matter of scale, like everything else, but 100%, I think freelance artists have it the hardest, right? In terms of not having uh, a stable, a stable job and not having those longer term things like benefits and maternity leave and even sick leave. So, absolutely. I don't know, structure. structure. Um, yeah, I think, I think um, not to belabor the point, but yes, um, court is also in the position, um, especially through the relationship with the University of Chicago, right? Um, uh, where, where staff members have access to an incredible um, breadth of resources. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, there also, I think, is something about relationships that actually, to me, um, uh, are the types of things that make policy versus the other way around, right? And so mm -hmm. what it means to have uh, uh, I was I was thinking about this too in, in relationship to this panel, right? Um, five hour or five day work weeks, straight sixes, which are like it's my favorite phrase in the world. Um, uh, uh, ten out of twelve's gone. Not that eight out of tens are easy. They're still really freaking hard. It's still dark all the time when you're outside. Um, but like under not just doing them, but like understanding who that's for and why. Right, like, um, uh, and that to me, I think, is the is the work of like the re relationality uh, with with um, folks that that I think we're not to the point yet. But you you start saying, okay, this artist is like we have more artists around who are um, more more. Um, women, especially mothers, who are who are in their mid thirties, <laughs> or in their in, in, into their forties, who are actually who are who are a part of our relationships, and we understand what the need is, we understand what the ask is, we understand what the shows are that we're programming, we understand um, what uh, what the lift is, we under and and I think that that to me feels really important is that it's not just about sort of like blanket policy but it's about saying we can make changes because you're because you're invited here mm -hmm. and also because you're here we understand what the consequences of those changes are and and that drives what the what the work is and how and how it grows and gets better right mm -hmm. like I think it would be easy to say this process like was perfect, right? Because it was all these parents and everybody knew what they were doing and everybody knew why you wanted to do it. But like, it's actually sort of about the trying. It's about saying, mm -hmm. actually, this is what our priorities are right. because these are the people yeah. in the room. Yeah. And it's not gonna be perfect this time, yeah. but being made a priority, I think matters yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I echo that the most. Yeah. Like, uh, in terms of structure, feel like it's the culture mm -hmm. right the the culture at, at, at our offices is we're all moms so we all understand when you you're sending out emails at 9 p.m <laughs> and you're trying to catch up on work that you haven't been able to do because mm -hmm. you only have your kid in daycare for two days a week mm -hmm. and you're packing everything into two days right at, at, there are days where we have late meetings mm -hmm. and I have to go to those meetings and I just bring the kid in from daycare and Lolo just grabs my kid and whisks her away, and she's like, all right, Fifi time, you know. <laughs> I, I don't even have to worry about her in that office. There's toys, there's a bucket of toys in our office. We have, um, I think we have juice boxes in here. <laughs> like, we're, uh, we've had the husbands even come in. Like, everyone just, like, our space is, we're a much smaller staff. I think we exude a big presence. Um, but we're we're significantly small administrative office, and we're doing the same things on our stages, right? We're hiring smaller casts, mm -hmm. um, so that allows us also, I mean, not that we don't want to do bigger shows, right? But by being able to focus in on these smaller shows, we're able to focus in that budget on 
same thing, eight out of tens, where I would offer these stipends to, um, to our casts. Um, we're able to, to honestly like cater to their needs. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because we're so like painfully aware of how hard it is to be parent. We have something called No Work Fridays. It's total bullshit. <laughs> um, like it's, it's a real No Work Friday. Like we're just trying to have meetings, right? But it's really a day where either you're gonna work or you're not, the expectation is not really there. We know that your kid is coming home hot or maybe you wanna have an extra day with your kid mm -hmm. that's not just the weekend and that that's completely understood and acceptable. Um, that is, for me, the structure that we have, is that it's, it, it permeates through our walls, mm -hmm. that this is a, a parent-run facility and we don't, I mean, I don't really need to finish the sentence, we're just, mm -hmm. we're parents. Yeah, wow. Um, sounds like an amazing place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come hang out. Um, so what large or small things could the theater industry do to dissolve some more of those barriers for parents working in theater? I know Elsa what you're going to say. <laughs> um, um, about the t-shirt. Our t-shirt, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a huge pay equity divide between staff, administrators, freelance artists, no matter what company you look at. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a huge divide for uh, gender. So the average male artist in Illinois makes about $62,000 a year. The average woman artist in Illinois makes about $45,000 um, a year. Um, it's painful, right, to yeah. like <laughs> get the numbers out loud. Um, and you see this play out in lots of different ways, both <coughs> like I think um, a lot of uh, people kind of like uh, nodded to taking less work right when they had kids and those types of things, but also the way we pay feminized labor versus masculinized mm -hmm. labor. And so you'll have um, large theaters downtown that pay carpenters like $31 an hour and costume shop workers $17 an hour. Um, this was last <coughs> September. Mm. Hopefully things have gotten better. Mm. But like that's what makes up that divide. And so... Um, you know, you have that kind of like internally as staff, and then you have at every single theater that hires freelance artists, actors, designers, technicians, as they needed, um, a divide of pay for those folks, the access to benefits they get, the time off, the security of knowing where their next paycheck is coming, which is a huge mm -hmm. thing to be able to plan and save and, you know, uh, plan your future. Um, so all that is a it's a big problem and um, there's been good movement on it, but it's also like not enough because people are like living through this right now. Yeah. What else? Thinking, thinking forward. Yeah, I, I, um, I have a lot of conversations with people. I, I preached at Storefront for a while. I have a lot of friends who are still in that, weird, that world, um, but also in my fancy downtown desk job um, about parent issues that get cast as mother's issues. Mm -hmm. And I think um, I would love to get to a place where uh, we acknowledge that most, not most, but many families have more than one parent. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there are artists of many gender identities who are parents and working, and yet it seems to be the women who mostly have these conversations. Um, but I would also love to get to a place where we talk about how uh, an eight out of 10 rather than a 10 out of 12 is helpful if you have a disability. Yeah. You have to take breaks at regular times if you take insulin. If you need to get off your prosthetic limbs at different intervals. Um, some of the things we're talking about, uh, having, having the ability to check out midday or say I have a conflict with this rehearsal to go take your aging parent to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Um, like a lot of the things that parents need are also things that people in other categories need mm -hmm. um, and Lord knows some parents are also in those categories mm -hmm. um, so I would love to see the industry get to a place where we're talking about just humane working conditions for people with complicated lives mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily have to be about parenting or mothers mm -hmm. as it's <coughs> Yeah, I think that's something that Pal has sort of preached from the beginning is whatever you're doing to make 
work better for parents is going to make work better for everybody. Mm -hmm. Whether it's better scheduling, better pay, uh, more predictability, better benefits, and all of it makes everybody's life better and why not? What else? Thinking ahead to the future, what do you dream of? Yeah, I think that there's, um, uh, there's always the risk um, in advocacy when you identify a need that that becomes perceived as a, a pathology, mm. right? And so, like, um, just like, just like being black, just like being a woman, just like being, I don't know, a southerner. Like, there, are, like, there are so many things, right? That like, I like put me in identity categories that folks feel certain types of ways because mm -hmm. of um, oppression um, and, and white supremacy and misogyny in, in the world. Um, and uh, those aren't pathologies, they are my experience and they're my identity, but mm -hmm. they're, um, and so um, as I'm figuring out what it means for me to be a parent and what it means for me to be a mother, um, the more articulate I am about my experience, um, the more I feel um, the tendency to put that in a, a category that, that uh, a category, right? Like really like a category, right? Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think what you're offering is something that I, I feel genuinely, which is, um, and, I, and I love this idea of, um, uh, not this idea. It's a, it's a thing we understand, like the feminization of labor, right? Like, um, so much of my work is in traditionally masculine spaces, and I'm like, am unabashedly feminine about my approach. I'm unabashedly feminist about my approach. I'm unabashedly black feminist about my approach, because the default is not the um, the the uh, only way, or even the best way to operate. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think I often find myself right talking about talking about work weeks, talking about hours, talking about what you ask of people, not because I think that there are metrics that we should be striving towards, mm -hmm. but because I have operated in my body for enough years to know that the world was not meant for me. And so like, why would I why would I try to augment things that aren't made for me rather than articulate the world that I'd like to live in? Mm -hmm. And like, I think that that's the, like, that's the, the work. And like, yeah. that's, that is, um, it's again, it's not, po it's not on a policy level, it's on a relational level so that people start to actually live the thing that then they begin to demand. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, offerings, conversations, invitations are very different than mandates and dictates, but they're the ways that we learn what people need, mm -hmm. um, and they're the ways that we learn um, how, uh, how um, people buy into an industry that we all learned that we can't live without, but some of us um, also can't live with, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just, I just think that like the, the work of identifying who we are and inviting people to bring their whole selves into a space mm -hmm. and modeling that readily mm -hmm. is the way the work of saying okay I'm dismantling the way things were not because they don't work for me but because they actually don't work for any of mm -hmm. us and so let's start over and I'm gonna bring all of me what do you have mm -hmm. and let's talk about it let's not guess about it mm -hmm. let's be about it together um, and have juice boxes <laughs> yeah, and buckets of toys. Yeah, and buckets of toys. And like whatever else. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever I don't know what you need today. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm holding back. <coughs> You're holding back yours. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> this is tough. Amazing. <laughs> I, want, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, any final thoughts? I, I think it's probably time to wrap up. I hope we haven't gone too late. I'm worried about falling asleep. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a little baby at home. I have no excuse. Um, uh, any final thoughts? Um, I mean, just so if I, if I could just like 
double down on the culture thing, right? Like, so this is this is work that we as parents are doing, you know, to like change that culture. And and I think we really do need to focus in on changing this for people who have no idea what parenthood is. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I still can vaguely remember, you know. Parenthood. <laughs> uh, how much? It's foggy. Just a little bit there, right? But I can still remember just how much I put off having a kid because I knew, and it did happen. I knew it would affect my career for the worse. In, in, in terms of like, I haven't actually been in front of a camera except this one um, <laughs> since I got pregnant, right? Um, I I knew that it would affect my relationship with all of the people that I used to love working with to the point where it's like isolating and you're alone. I'm gonna cry. Um, <laughs> but it's that, like, those are people who you hope they'll be there. Mm. And then they're gone. And it's nothing you did and it's nothing they did. It's just now your lives are so different that you can't work together. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, it's painful. Um, why don't you cry? <laughs> um, it's because I'm not like sad about it anymore. It's just thinking about it. Like mm -hmm. it really does affect your ability to get back to work. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I just want to get back to work. I love my kid. I need to write stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to perform. I need to create. Um, because that's what I've always wanted to do, and I want to be a mother. We should be able to do yes. both. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I really want to change that for people who are putting off having kids. Mm -hmm. Like you're, people are actually doing this because they don't see any other recourse. They don't see a future with a child, and to know now what that is, I'm like God. I wish I met her like eight years ago. <laughs> I wish I could have done it, you know. Mm -hmm. But I didn't feel like I could because that support system wasn't there. So those are my final thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. Um <laughs> there's a lot of moms up here. There's gotta be one yeah. <laughs> shamelessly is what I'm going to take away from this panel and that is what it takes to build a world where you don't have to fear becoming a parent and just living the whatever life you want to live uh, and fear that that's going to ruin your career and I know that I was told that it would I don't know about everybody else but I definitely got that message loud and clear um, so yeah go out there and mother shamelessly right? fantastic alright I think I'm going to do